Sounds right. good. I think good we are night. we are recording. We're live. Yeah, we made it. Cool, awesome. So great, uh, great having uh, how many people? Eleven thousand people. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, welcome. Yeah, welcome everybody to the uh, getting started with Web three, all things MetaMask, our monthly uh, community call here with uh, Man Beer. And uh, we're literally speaking everything that the community wants. We run through through different things, but uh, yeah, I let so I let I let Manbir take over. But so, some kind of housekeeping. So we'll speak today, Manbir, our, our best community manager for MetaMask. Uh, I'm a part of the dev, developer relation uh, team with Anthony. At Anthony is also supporting us uh, through the chat. And uh, if you guys have specific questions, shoot the question on the uh, bottom left. And also we created some cool pools that you guys uh, that you guys should answer and uh, yeah let's uh, let's uh, move forward on the on the on the agenda so long uh, long story short i mean it's not a long story but will be will be a funny story i think we have around 50 50 50 minutes to an hour uh, and we just outline anything that has to do with metamask right how you set up what is metamask how you set up the wallet uh, we're going also through of um, uh, how you can buy directly uh, crypto with your fiat or how you can buy crypto directly on your metamask how you customize your rpcs for anybody that know what's rpcs uh, that's that's uh, that would be fun and uh, also specific and the easy things like you can send and receive crypto with qrs or non qrs we also touch the what is a swap right how you can buy and swap uh, crypto also how you can see the transaction on your uh, explorer etherscan specifically and uh, and uh, you know things like adding uh, NFTs or costume tokens directly in your extension or mobile. I think we're covering mostly on uh, extension uh, and uh, and uh, other things. I mean, it will be a long list, but I think we having with uh, with us Mambir today will be also uh, very uh, you know condensed and give a lot of information. It's great that this is recorded. Yeah, without uh, further ado, I give you the word, Mambir. So excited to have you here and. Uh, um, uh, again, welcome everybody in this call and uh, excited. Awesome. Well, thanks for such a sweet introduction, Francesco. Uh, and thanks for co-hosting this with me. Uh, excited to have you all here, everyone. And uh, just, as, just as a short intro, I am Manbir and I'm working as a community manager for MetaMask. And this is the third uh, workshop of all things MetaMask series, where we talk about all things that you require uh, in order to learn how to get safely onboarded to the Web3 ecosystem. So this is the session outline. We'll be going through uh, what is MetaMask installation and setup, as Francesco told you, all the way up to intro to MetaMask snaps and security best practices. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So leading to the main question, uh, what exactly is MetaMask? But before understanding MetaMask, we first need to understand what's the difference between a self-custodial and a custodial wallet or a custodial versus a non-custodial wallet, right? So with custodial wallets, the private key of the wallet uh, basically is held by the third party, such as an exchange or a server. So for example, if you're using an exchange like Binance, FTX, or any local exchange uh, in your country, the private key would be held by that exchange on a centralized server. With non-custodial wallets, on the other hand, or self-custodial wallets, uh, the user, that is you, are in full control of the, your assets with the assets being on your device like a hardware wallet, a PC, or a mobile phone. So that being said, let's try to understand how a uh, MetaMask wallet works uh, through this video. I can I can hear the the sound I think. I can't hear the sound my beer. I think you're muted.
Okay, can you hear me now? Okay. This is Sam. Sam is the audio there now? Yes. Awesome. Cool. Finally. uses the internet just like the rest of us. Lots of apps she uses seem to be free, but they actually come at a cost. She knows the internet isn't very secure and strangers own her data. Credit cards are stolen, identities get hacked. She has to navigate a maze of ads just to surf the web, and she knows someone is always watching. But she's heard there's a better way. And then Sam sees it, the promise of a new internet powered by the Ethereum blockchain, an amazing combination of technologies the world is building together that are reinventing how we connect to one another. And it's just within her reach. But to access this new world, she needs the right tools. Meet MetaMask, your connection to the new web. MetaMask is the tool Sam needs to access this new world. It's a key that connects her to new types of applications. It's a wallet that keeps her data and valuables safe and sound. And it's a shield that protects her from hackers and data collectors. With MetaMask, Sam is ready to explore this new internet safely and securely. The possibilities are endless. Sam can use next generation applications that give control back to the users and the community, own her data and move seamlessly between sites and send money across the world at a fraction of the cost. Create new organizations with new currencies that bind her communities together. Crowdsource projects and art, or invest in other people's creations. Sound too good to be true? Well, with great freedom comes great responsibility. Sam controls her own identity on this new internet. No more new passwords for every site she visits. Just a secret phrase that controls her accounts. This phrase is her login, her password, and her proof of ownership all wrapped up in one. So Sam has to keep it as safe as she possibly can. Now that she's installed MetaMask, Sam's ready to explore the best version of the internet. Vote, crowdfund, buy stuff, publish writing, make art, hire freelancers. What will Sam do first? Whatever she wants. The internet is hers to explore. Welcome to a new kind of internet. Welcome to MetaMask. All right, I hope I am still audible. Cool. Uh, okay. Good. So yeah, what will Sam do first, whatever she wants, and that's kind of the potential that MetaMask holds. Uh, it's whatever you want to do with MetaMask, it's all in your head. You can do anything you want. And going forward, so yeah, as I mentioned with, just to sum it up, uh, with custodial wallets, the private keys held by the third party, such as an exchange or a server, with non-custodial or self-custodial wallets like MetaMask, the user is in full control of their assets with your assets being on your device, like a hardware wallet, a PC, or a mobile phone. So there's these jargons, right? Secret recovery phrase, password, SRP, uh, or seed phrase. What are these? What, are, what is the difference between all of these? Uh, let's try to understand that. So a secret recovery phrase or an SRP is a master key to your wallet, which is used to access your accounts and funds on a blockchain network. And it is also called a seed phrase. Uh, what is the difference between a password and a secret recovery phrase? A password simply limits access to your MetaMask wallet, whereas a secret recovery phrase is used to access your assets on the blockchain network. You can also use your MetaMask SRP to access your assets from another wallet. So if you're using another wallet, say for example, a Coinbase wallet or any, any uh, self-custodial wallet, you can use that secret recovery phrase to export that wallet in your MetaMask account. Cool. So uh, difference between a public key and a private key. A public key is like a bank account that identifies an entity with or without digital assets, whereas a private key is like a pin of your bank account. It provides control over your funds. Uh, so good thing to keep in mind a public key is something that you can give out to anyone basically and a private key is something that is very highly confidential and uh, it, it's basically a secret so you should never give out to anyone i made this illustration to uh, make you better understand how uh, the anatomy of a metamask wallet works basically so the seed phrase 
sits at the middle and uh, a password is needed to access your metamask wallet so it uh, acts like a front gate to your metamask wallet and provides you with an application level security a seed phrase on the other hand is a set of 12 randomly generated words and provides you a blockchain level security and a seed phrase derives uh, two key components uh, a public key and a private key each set of public private key pair is uh, something that is called an account on a metamask wallet so by default you will see account 1 and you can add account 2 account 3 and so on as you go and you can rename these accounts as well i hope this makes it clear leading to the installation part all right so i'll do one thing i'll visit metamask.io now on my browser and uh, i'll just simply do this Cool. So now that I'm on metamask.io, what I'll do is uh, I'll click on download for Chrome. And it takes me to the Chrome web store. What I can do from here is, okay, so a good thing to check this uh, is basically uh, to check this blue tick mark. Uh, this is something that show, tells you basically that this is from a legitimate uh, provider right like metamask so if you see any chrome extension that does not con uh, contain this blue check mark it is basically a phishing attempt or any anything of that sort so avoid those kind of extensions and uh, i'll click on add to chrome from here and i'll click on add extension we'll give it a couple of seconds and as you can see this loads up and uh, i'm presented with this screen We'll give it another few seconds. OK, so it says, welcome to MetaMask, connecting you to Ethereum and the decentralized web. We're happy to see you. And I'll click on Get Started. It says, help us improve MetaMask. MetaMask would like to gather users' data to better understand how our users interact with the extension. The data will be used to continually improve the usability and user experience of our product and the Ethereum ecosystem. So MetaMask is entirely a client-side software, which means that we do not get access to any of the user data, but we do collect analytics to improve MetaMask over time. So MetaMask will always allow you to opt out via settings, send anonymized click and page view events, but we never collect keys, addresses, transactions, balances, hashes, or any personal information. We never collect your full IP address, and we never sell data for profit ever. So that's something that would bring you peace of mind. Uh, and I'll click on I agree from here. And it gives me this option uh, to check whether uh, you already use, uh, uh, you already been using a self-custodial wallet. And in that case, you can import a wallet. Uh, you can enter the existing secret recovery phrase to import that wallet. But since uh, we do not have a, a secret recovery phrase, uh, I click on create a new wallet from here. I need to enter a password, so I'll simply do that. And I'll click on, I have read and uh, agreed to the terms of use and click, click on create. And it presents me this screen, secure your wallet. So uh, before getting started, you need to watch this short video to learn about your secret recovery phrase and how to keep your wallet safe. And I'll uh, quickly play this video. sites and applications. Okay, I hope this is audible, Francesco. Uh, can you let me know if this is audible? Yes, it works. Cool. On traditional websites, a central database or bank is responsible for controlling and recovering your accounts. But on MetaMask, all of the power belongs to the holder of a master key. Whoever holds the key controls the accounts. 
Your secret recovery phrase is your master key. It's a series of 12 words that are generated when you first set up MetaMask, which allow you to recover your wallet and funds if you ever lose access. It's important that you secure your wallet by keeping your secret recovery phrase very safe and very secret. If anyone gets access to it, they will have the master key to your wallet and can freely access and take all of your funds. To secure your MetaMask wallet, you'll want to safely save your secret recovery phrase. You can write it down, hide it somewhere, put it in a safe deposit box, or use a secure password manager. Some users even engrave their phrase onto a metal plate. Nobody, not even the team at MetaMask, can help you recover your wallet if you lose your secret recovery phrase. If you haven't written down your secret recovery phrase and stored it somewhere safe, do it now. We'll wait. And remember, never share your secret recovery phrase with anyone, not even us. If anyone ever asks you for it, they're trying to scam you. That's it. Now you know what a secret recovery phrase is and how to keep your wallet safe and secure. All right. Cool. Uh, I hope I'm still audible, Francesco. Cool. So yeah, switching back to the slide. Uh, Switching back to the demo, actually. So it says secure your wallet. I hope that video makes it easier for you to understand how to safeguard your secret recovery phrase. Uh, and just to reiterate on how uh, what is the secret recovery phrase, your secret recovery phrase is a 12 word phrase that is the master key to your wallet and your funds. How do you keep it safe? Uh, save it in a password manager, uh, store it in a bank vault, store it in a safe deposit box, write down and store it in multiple secret places. Should you ever share, share your secret recovery phrase with anyone? Never. Never ever share it uh, with anyone, not even with the MetaMask team. If someone reaches out to you asking for your SRP, they are likely trying to scam you and steal your wallet funds. Cool. Uh, So a password manager, all right. A password manager is a software that is used to store and access your password in a safe and encrypted way. They increase convenience and security at the same time. But we also need to understand what are the risks of using a password manager. So these are the risks associated with using a password manager for, for getting your pa master password. All sensitive data is in one place. Backup is not always possible. Not all devices are secure enough. Quality of password managers also need to be considered, and also the level of ne encryption needs to be considered. Cool. So I'll click on next from here, and it takes me to this page. It shows me my secret recovery phrase. And it, again, tells you a warning to never disclose, disclose your secret recovery phrase with anyone. And if anyone gets access to it, uh, they can take your funds forever. So I'll uh, click on this to reveal the secret recovery phrase. And boom, what I just did is I just compromised my wallet. And if this was my personal wallet, I'd be screwed up big time. But since we are doing this only for demo purposes, we are safe. So what I can do from here is, again, it says uh, write this phrase on a piece of paper and store it in a secure location. If you want to uh, have more security, write it down on multiple pieces of paper and store it in two to three different locations. Uh, the best would be if you can memorize this phrase. What I can do from here is I can download the SRP from here. And it downloads a text file that I can open directly from here. Cool. Uh, so I'll click on next. And it asks me to confirm my secret recovery phrase uh, by selecting each of those 12 generated words in that particular sequence. So I'll do that right now. Exit, drive, chronic, and swap. And I'll click on confirm. 
and it says congratulations you have passed the test keep your secret recovery phrase safe it's your responsibility responsibility being the keyword here and here are some tips on storing it safely save a backup of your srp in multiple places never share the phrase with anyone be careful of phishing what is phishing it's the fraudulent practice of sending emails pur purporting to be from a reputable uh, from a reputable company in this case metamask in order to induce individuals to reveal personal information in this case srp so uh, metamask will never spontaneously ask for your srp ever if you need to back up your srp uh, you can find it under settings and security so our users uh, frequently mention to us that if uh, we pass this stage of setting up the metamask wallet can we access the secret recovery phrase again yes you can do that under the settings and if you ever have questions or see something fishy you can contact our support from here so this is the official support channel that you should uh, submit a request using and again metamask can no, uh, cannot ever recover your secret recovery phrase uh, and it, it it being a self custodial wallet it's your responsibility to save it and i'll click on all done and i'll close this so i'm presented with this screen uh, it says account 1 0 eth uh, it tells me my balance it says buy send and swap it gives me these uh, three options right on the home page it shows all the assets and the activity and all right moving to directly the deck now so buying crypto directly from metamask so uh metamask allows you to purchase crypto directly using your metamask wallet uh, through this buy option so you see zero eth right now i currently have a zero eth uh, currently on my uh, wallet uh, but i can purchase that directly from here using the buy option so these are the steps that you need to follow click on the buy button in metamask select uh, the provider you would like to use so we have partnered with transact moonpay and wire you can use any of these providers to purchase eth uh, or any crypto of your choice uh, you'll be redirected to their platform to make the payment uh, enter the amount of fiat currency you'd like to spend to generate an estimate of how much crypto you'll receive and the fees you'll have to pay make sure you've selected the token you want to buy and the desired amount follow the prompts from there to complete the transaction and your purchase crypto will be deposited directly into your metamask wallet uh okay so back to the extension uh, metamask extension i see coinbase pay transact moonpay and wire so we have also partnered with coinbase pay recently uh so you see these four providers and we have also recently introduced a new feature that is uh, something that aggregates through all these providers to provide you the best code which is available on metamask mobile now and one more thing to note is that you'll need to do a basic kyc in order to purchase crypto from any of these providers and all the kyc related data is uh, basically something that you send out to these providers and we do not get access to any of that data ever cool uh, back to the deck and exploring the decentralized world all right so networks what's a blockchain network a blockchain network is an ecosystem of decentralized applications using which we can interact with defi nfts and the metaverse a testnet is a prototype of a blockchain network used by the developers for building and testing on a network whereas a mainnet is a completely developed blockchain network for users to transact using their tokens so a testnet is something where funds are uh, not real so you you uh, get test tokens from this website uh, from any faucet like faucet.paradigm.xyz i can visit this website and i need to sign in with my twitter account uh, it takes me back to this uh, where i can put up my address so if i switch back to the uh, wallet uh, i see my address here account 1 so using this i can copy my address and it says copied so this is my public address basically and i can put it up here to request for funds right uh, i can check this and i can click on claim it takes a couple of minutes so we'll not be waiting for that um, and if i go back um, if i switch to a test network i can click on show high test networks from here and i can enable this from here and if i go back to metamask 
uh, I can see these test networks, Robson, Kovan, Rinkaby, and Goli. I can switch to any test network from here, say Kovan. Uh, and as you can see, the test Kovan ETH has been dropped from uh, Paradigm, right? That we just uh, requested. And if we switch to other networks as well, Rinkaby, uh, as you can see, Rinkaby uh, test ETH has also been dropped. And switching back to Ethereum mainnet now. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, so this is the difference between a testnet and a mainnet. Uh, funds on the mainnet, unlike the testnet, are real and they hold real value on the market. And you can trade using basically your tokens uh, using using the ETH, ETH mainnet or any any blockchain network uh, mainnet. Cool. Uh, all right. Sending and receiving crypto. So uh, before jumping on to how you can add a custom network, we'll uh, try to see how you can send and receive crypto. So you see an option to send from here, right? What you need to do is you need to copy the address. For example, I'll copy my own address, but you can take uh, any address from your friend or anyone, right? You can copy that address and you can click on send. You can simply paste that address over here. It says insufficient funds for gas, definitely, uh, because I don't have any funds right now. But I can, uh, if I have any funds over here, I can simply put up the amount over here, like 0.1 ETH, for example. That's equivalent to 162 US dollar. And uh, I can send that from here. What I can do is, OK, I have another wallet here uh, that I can add, uh, basically, that I can use to sign in. This is also a test wallet. All right. So what I can do is I can try doing a testnet transaction. So switching to the Kuwan test network. So I'll do one thing. I can send this to my uh, Kuwan testnet uh, to the wallet that I've just created. I'll switch to Kuwan and um, I'll click on cancel. I'll copy my address from here and I'll paste the address right here. Cool. I'll enter the amount, say, for example, 0 0.01 Kowan ETH, right? And I can click on Next. And it shows me estimated gas fee. So what exactly is a gas fee? A gas fee is basically a reward given to the miners for verifying or validating a transaction that gets added to the blockchain. Higher the amount of pending transactions in a network, more the gas fee. Simply supply demand economics, right? So if you want to make a transaction and there are uh, a lot of pending transactions on the network, you'll need to pay a high amount of gas fee. So people sometimes uh, reach out to us uh, saying that, why do I need to pay that high of an amount of a gas fee, right? But it's not in our hands. That depends on the network itself, right? So it tells you the estimated gas fee that you'll need to pay. And it tells you the time that uh, the transaction will go through in. Uh, and the total amount that you need to pay. I can confirm this from here. And we'll give it a couple of seconds. And as you can see, the transaction is now pending. Uh, it has added to the uh, pending activity. Uh, and I can view it on a block explorer. Cool. So uh, so it, Etherscan, exactly. What, what exactly is Etherscan? Etherscan is a block explorer, which is used to check activity related to a blockchain or a, a, basically a wallet on a, a blockchain network like Ethereum, for example. So from here, what I can do is I can see the activity that has happened. So for example, the transaction that, that I just did, I can check that on Etherscan. So it shows me the transaction hash. This is uh, an identifier, uh, an, basically an identifier to a transaction that I can copy directly from here. So this is a transaction hash. And you can see the status. So, so the transaction just went through. I can switch back. And I, as you can see, earlier I had like 1 co 1 ETH. Now I have 1.01 co 1 ETH. And uh, on Etherscan, it also shows you block in which the transaction was included, the timestamp to and from the wallet address, uh, value that, that was sent, transaction fee, gas price, and all the gas-related info. 
So you can see all the transactional details on Etherscan. Cool. Switching back to the slide deck. Now adding a custom network. To add a custom network such as Polygon, BSC, etc., uh, you can you can do that. Basically, you can add a new network. Uh, so, for example, you uh, by default only have Ethereum mainnet and some of the test network, but you can add uh, Polygon, BSC, or any of of such networks by clicking on Custom RPC through the networks list and add the following details: network name, RPC URL, chain ID, currency symbol, and block explorer URL. So network name uh, is basically like a polygon or uh, basically BSC or any network name like uh, of that sort, right? RPC URL. So uh, it is a URL that is uh, related to a remote procedure, remote procedure call RPC. It is basically a way to uh, basically a way between networks to communicate with each other. A chain ID, which is uh, specific to each network, a chain ID restricts a transaction happening from uh, a transaction happening on a test network to be replayed on the mainnet. A currency symbol uh, such as Matic or BNB, etc. A block explorer URL uh, such as polygonscan.com. So I need to add all these details, and I can get these details by simply searching add network name to MetaMask. So for example, add polygon or add BSC to MetaMask. Alternatively, you can add it in a few clicks using chainlist.org as well. So I'll switch back to the demo. I'll click on Ethereum mainnet and I'll click on add network. So what I can do is now I can search for add polygon to MetaMask. And I'll only refer to the uh, original documentation that is docs.polygon.network. And if I scroll down, I'll see these details. Uh, the network name, RPC URL, uh, chain ID, and the currency symbol. I need to copy and paste all these details in these fields. But what I can also do is I can visit chainlist.org. So chainlist uh, is a platform that allows you to add any network uh, with one single click. So for example, I can simply connect my wallet from here. It asks you to connect with MetaMask, and this is how it's done on Web3. On Web2, you used to simply sign in using your uh, your username, your password, with all those details, and it used to be quite a lengthy process, right? With Web3, all you need to do is connect your MetaMask wallet. You can select your account from here, click on Next, and connect, and that's how easy it is. So you can see my wallet is now connected. And I can add all these networks that are listed over here with one single click. So for example, I need to add Polygon mainnet from here. I can uh, click on Add to MetaMask. And it shows me all these details. It firstly asks me to allow this site to add a network. This will allow the network to be used within MetaMask. And it shows me all these details that I was supposed to enter manually. So it fetches automatically, right? And this is how easy it gets. I can simply up click on Approve from here, and I need to switch network. Now, when I switch back to the extension, if I go back, and as you can see, Polygon mainnet is now added. This is how easy it gets, right? Cool. Uh, sending and receiving crypto, this is done. Intro to Etherscan. Etherscan is something that I've uh, just now introduced you with. Uh, and switching back to etherscan. IO. So this is how the home page looks like. And when I'm on the home page, I can search for any address, transaction, hash, block, or token, or ENS domain from here. So for example, the transaction that we just did, uh, we can look at it in under the activity. Uh, we can switch to this. We can look this under the activity. And we can copy the transaction ID from here. So if I switch back to um, etherscan.io now, I can simply paste this transaction and cl uh, click on search. So this was done on Kowan test network. So the, for the test networks, there's a uh, separate etherscan. Uh, so you can visit uh, kowan.etherscan.io for that. And you can simply paste the address here. And as you can see, this is a Kowan test net transaction only. So it shows you the transaction, right? And 
for this particular thing, uh, etherscan.io, this is the main uh, platform that shows you transactions happening on the main net, the Ethereum main net. So if I search for my wallet address, basically, uh, say, for example, this one, right? Or, yeah, let's search it up for this. Cool. I'll drop it here. And I'll click on search. And as you can see, it shows me balance that is zero ether right now. It shows me ether value and my name tag. That would be ENS, basically. And I can copy the address from here. I can scroll down and it would show me all the transactions that are happening uh, through this wallet, right? If we switch to the Kowan testnet, uh, kowan.etherscan.io, and if I paste that same address here, and if I search it up, it shows me all the transactions that are happening uh, through my Kowan testnet on, on, on my wallet, right? And it shows me the transaction hash, method, block, age, uh, to and from the wallet that it was sent across, all those details. It shows me all the tokens that I'm holding and all the wallet-related data. Cool. Um, switching back to the deck now. Adding a custom token. All right, switching to the extension and switching to the Ethereum mainnet. So you see zero ETH over here. And what if you need to add a different token? So say what, uh, what if you need to add Matic or uh, BNB or any token of that sort, like uh, DAI, for example, or USDT. So what you can do is you can click on import tokens and you can search up for the token you want to add. Say for example, USDT. So I'll simply search for USDT and I can click on tether USD and I can click on next. And I can click on import tokens from here. And if I go back, as you can see, USDT is now imported. So if I have if I've been holding any USDT balance, it would load up. Uh, you you don't need to add that. Uh, I mean, if, to just to check the balance, you would uh, definitely need to add. But to receive USDT in your wallet, uh, you'll you you'll be able to receive that even if you have not added that. So you can. Uh, receive that uh, in your wallet and you can add that later as well if you'd like to. Now, what if I need to add a token that is not uh, listed in, in the import token list, right? Say, for example, uh, if I need to add XYZ token, uh, let's search it up for Uni, right? Uni is also there, but what if Uni token is not uh, in this list? Or what if I need to add a token that is not in this list? So I can click on custom token. And I need these details over here. So, so token contract address, token symbol, token decimal. How do I get these details? I'll switch back to etherscan.io. I'll go back to the home page and I'll search for uni. And it shows me under the tokens uniswap or uni. I can click on this and it shows me the contract details, right? It shows me uh, the contract ID that I can copy from here. And if I go back to my MetaMask wallet, I can paste the token contract address, which is the token uh, token contract ID basically uh, here. And the token symbol and the token decimal would load up automatically. What I can do is I can add custom token direct directly from here and import tokens. And as you can see, Uni is also now added. You can see it in my wallet now. Cool. Switching back to the deck. Uh, MetaMask swaps. All right, what is MetaMask swaps? This is really interesting. It's a built-in feature that lets users swap tokens directly from their wallet. Swaps combines data from multiple decentralized exchanges, aggregators, professional market makers, and individual taxes in order to make sure that MetaMask users always get the best price with the lowest network fee possible. So switching back, uh, what I can see here is MetaMask swap feature, right? I can click on this. And it, okay, uh, I'll click on no thanks. Uh, it asks me to swap from and swap to. So if I need to swap ETH to say Uni or ETH to USDC or USDT, I can do that directly from my MetaMask wallet. 
how cool is that so i don't need to visit any external uh, dex platform or any platform of that sort to uh, get a code and to do the whole swap i can do that directly from my metamask wallet so say for example if i need to swap eth to usdc i simply need to enter the amount say 0.1 eth if i need to swap that amount and i can click on review swap and it fetches the codes in a couple of seconds in as you can see it, it, it did it in ju just like under 2 seconds right and i don't need to visit uh, any external platform spend ex any, any additional time it saves you a lot of time right so it tells you an estimated gas fee uh, and it tells you across best of five ports and it takes a small amount of metamask fee and what i can do is i can uh, if i have enough balance i can simply swap it through this uh, option and it would swap it since I don't have uh, an option uh, to do that because I don't have enough funds, we can skip that from here. But from here, you will need to simply click on swap and it will do the magic. Cool, switching back to the slide deck. All right, NFTs, what are NFTs? An NFT is a non-fungible token uh, that is a digital asset that can represent real world object like art, music, videos, GIFs, in-game items, etc and can be bought and sold using crypto like ETH. The ownership records of an NFT is stored on a blockchain network. So for example, if I need to send an NFT to Francesco, I can do that and I can send out a one full NFT to Francesco and I cannot send a fraction of an NFT like I can do with crypto. Same with Francesco, he can send out one full NFT, but uh, he cannot send out 0.1 of an NFT to me. And all the records of that sending and uh, of that ownership can be viewed on a blockchain, right? On uh, Etherscan, for example, and on uh, platforms like OpenSea.io as well. So I'll visit uh, testnet.openc.io. Uh, I can also visit the regular version of it, that is OpenSea.io, which is used to connect your mainnet with the OpenSea uh, marketplace. But for now, we'll visit testnet.openc.io. And what I can do is I can uh, connect my MetaMask wallet directly from here. We'll try that again. Uh, and as you can see, it loads up uh, this window that asks me to connect with my MetaMask wallet. I can click on Next and Connect. And this is how you connect any uh, connect with any DApp, right? Any decentralized application. And it says, welcome to OpenSea, accept and sign. I can uh, sign the uh, basically transaction right from here. And it opens the MetaMask wallet. Uh, it asks me to allow the site to switch the network. So I need to switch from Rinkabi to Ethereum mainnet, uh, from Ethereum mainnet to Rinkabi, I'm sorry. So I can click on switch network. Now I am on uh, the testnet and I can sign this transaction. Cool, so it shows me my balance over here and uh, it asks me all, uh, basically, it shows me all the balance, uh, rink ETH and RAB ETH. And what I can do from here is I can go to my profile. So here's my profile and you can see a couple of NFTs over here. And uh, what I can do is I can visit the collected section. I can see my created NFTs from here. I can trade NFTs from here. And if you receive an NFT, it would show up in, in the hidden section. So what do you need to do is you can uh, basically click on the three dot menu under the hidden section and you will need to unhide that. I see the option to hide this because it shows up in under the collected section. But if you receive an NFT, you see, you'll see an option to unhide that for that to be publicly visible, right? And uh, if I go to the home page, I can explore the NFTs from here. So for example, uh, mutant ape yards club i can visit an, any nft and i can click on buy now right and i can click on this and i can complete my purchase from here and as you can see it would take a couple of seconds so we'll let that happen but this is how easy it is to purchase an nft and once I've purchased an NFT, it would simply show up under my collected NFTs. 
who is switching back to the deck now. ENS, all right. What is ENS? ENS is a decentralized domain name service on Ethereum. Uh, visiting ens.domains. So yeah, this is how the website looks like. I'll visit the homepage first. So it says decentralized naming for wallets, websites, and more. Uh, you can consider it as DNS, but it is decentralized and secured by the EDM network. So I can click on go to app from here. And it takes me to this uh, page that asked me to connect with MetaMask. And uh, it asked me to basically, I'll, I'll simply uh, cancel this because I'm currently on the testnet. And I'll do one thing, I'll uh, switch to Ethereum mainnet. And I can now go ahead and uh, connect to ENS app and click on next and connect. And now I'm connected, as you can see, main network, and it shows me my address as well. What I can do from here is I can search for any address, say, for example, quick brown fox 2022. Right, I can search it up from here, and this is available. I searched for a complex domain just so that just to make sure that it's available. And I can what I can do is I can purchase it from here. I can register, and then uh, registering would require you a, cert a certain amount of gas fee that you need to pay once. So if you purchase this domain for three years or five years, you pay that gas fee for uh, only once, right? So you you may, uh, if you need to uh, pay only a particular amount of gas fee only once, uh, you'll need to purchase that for a set uh, amount of time, say for five years, right? Uh, so I can do one thing, I can re request to register from here, but uh, I have insufficient balance on my wallet. Uh, but if I have enough balance, I can simply request to register. And these are the steps, three steps that I need to follow. That's how easy it is. All right. All right, now hardware wallets. What exactly is a hardware wallet? A hardware wallet is a device that is used to hold the private key of your crypto offline, which means that your wallet, uh, your private keys are not directly exposed to the web. It ensures an extra layer of security and makes sure that you stay protected from cyber attacks, phishing sites, and malware because the access to your coins is encrypted by the device. Whenever you want to sign a transaction, a hardware wallet helps you do that without directly connecting to the internet. These devices, just like MetaMask, require a secret recovery phrase that can be used to backup and restore your accounts. An important point to note, only buy hardware wallet directly from the manufacturer. How to connect MetaMask with a hardware wallet? You need to follow these steps. You need to unlock your MetaMask wallet. Select the icon on the top right corner. Select Connect Hardware Wallet. Choose Ledger, Trezor, Lattice, or Cure Based Wallet and click on Connect and simply select an account you need to interact with. Uh, now, note that MetaMask can only have one account connected and accessible at any given point of time. Once you've connected uh, your account, you, it will simply behave like any other MetaMask account, with the difference being you need to have your wallet plugged in for signing a transaction or message. Cool, blockchain gaming now. Uh, moving to gaming. so. These are some of the games that you can play using your MetaMask wallet. So Crazy Defense Heroes, Thetan Arena, Sandbox, Pegaxi, and DeFi Kingdoms. Now, there are a bunch of other games that you can explore uh, using your MetaMask wallet. And you can simply go ahead to uh, any, any, uh, these, any of these gaming platforms. You need to simply connect your wallet just like we did with OpenSea, with ENS, and play that game right there. All right, moving to MetaMask Naps. What exactly is MetaMask Naps? Rethinking the wallet. Uh, at, at, uh, any wallet at its core uh, holds the basic functionality to allow you to store keys, sign messages, make transactions, and a wallet makes all these things possible, right? But MetaMask, on the other hand, has a huge ecosystem of functionality, and yet there is so much more that it can be and that it can do. So why not decentralize it such that anyone can build on top of MetaMask? MetaMask Snaps allows that. MetaMask Snaps is a system that allows anyone to safely expand the capabilities of MetaMask. 
So what you can do is you can add new APIs to MetaMask. You can add support for different blockchain protocols, modify existing functionality of uh, MetaMask using internal APIs, and much, much more. So taking the second example, add support for different blockchain networks. Uh, so up until very recently, MetaMask was restricted only uh, for EVM blaze blockchain networks, like say for example Polygon uh, or any any EVM based blockchain network like BSC, right? And not to Bitcoin, Avalanche, uh, or Solana or any non EVM based network. But with Snaps, that would be possible. Snaps allows you to open the capabilities. To, of, of your MetaMask wallet to any of such networks like Solana, Avalanche, Bitcoin, etc. So it opens the potential of MetaMask to those ecosystems as well. And this is highly experimental and this is only for developers right now. So you can visit metamask.io slash flask to get to know how to build on, uh, on top of MetaMask snaps. So this is the Flask documentation. Flask is basically an isolated development environment for MetaMask in, using which you can build inside MetaMask. Uh, and uh, you, whatever you do in that isolated environment, any transactions or anything of that sort would stay in that environment itself. You can access cutting edge innovation and features right from your MetaMask Flask. And you can build a MetaMask snap right in your MetaMask Flask uh, wallet as well. Cool. Switching back to the deck now. All right. Some security best practices. Never share your secret recovery phrase. Never share your private keys. Never enter your secret recovery phrase or private keys into any website online. MetaMask support will never DM uh, you to uh, offer you any sort of help. We never DM uh, offering help to anyone uh, to recover your funds or to do any anything of that sort. Key takeaways, beware of fake websites. Official one is this, metamask.io. Uh, to download MetaMask, only visit this website. Official help is this, support.metamask.io and community.metamask.io for the community platform. Do not DM or call any number that claims to be MetaMask support. Never send your information via email. Do not contact emails sent to you uh, that attempt to contact you. Do not send tokens to people who ask for them. So, for example, people might reach out to you offering, uh, say, send uh, send me one ETH and I'll send you 10 in return. Do not do that. They are scammers no matter how sincere they sound, right? And with that, we get to the conclusion. So, Francesco, would you like to take over from here? Would you like to sum up anything? Would you like to uh, ask any questions or anything? I just want to say that uh, it's a great overview, very, say, very top of the funnel, beginner onboarding in Web3. And I think those things are very, let's say, under, undervalued when uh, anybody is joining the Web3 world, right? And uh, literally, like what you said uh, about not sharing, you know, uh, secret query phrase, private key are, are keystone of like self education. And uh, and, uh, you know, we will just repeat ourselves multiple times because, you know, like uh, as MetaMask is a, is a self costly wallet, non custodia, we need to make sure that, you know, any user out there is educating himself on how to manage his own key. That means manage his own money. Uh, I think that's that's exactly what what we're talking about here. And uh, that's great that uh, you, you gave this uh, overview not just you know terms, but also like simple features that MetaMask has, because it's literally an improvement over and over the years. And uh, and uh, you know like we are always super open in terms of community. I think you will mention that. But uh, reach out if you have anything, any feedback, anything that you want to to speak about optimization, uh, uh, feedback, support. And we have both like uh, the the community, so the discourse. We have a, a vibrant Discord community. I think we. Eat, the 13,000 uh, users this week on uh, on Discord, so that's great. And uh, and most important, do not share private keys on uh, on uh, public, even without team. I think that's uh, yeah. that's it, right? But, but and um, one more thing, I don't know if you have uh, would you to like add. to uh, simply go ahead and go over the polls that that we're going through? Mm-hmm. 100%. 100%. 
I think uh, I think you know people were were actually responding quite well in uh, in in the polls one. I mean, which one of these you will never share with uh, with anyone, including MetaMask support? Obviously, private keys. So well done, everybody. Um, also, like it's quite interesting to see, you know, what's the difference with the, between cold wallet and hot wallet. I think also as a follow up, Mambir, we could even send. Uh, we did different uh, videos on uh, explaining uh, cold wallets uh, offerings and uh, which partner do we working with. I think that's that might be also a good uh, a good video that we can send uh, our participant today. And obviously, everybody with 99.7 percent, they got uh, they got it right. Um, and uh, most important, uh, also, what you should not be in the in the third question. Uh, please never, never um, share your uh, your secret recovery phrase and uh, and private keys to to anyone. And don't disclose obviously password. Use always like uh, some uh, some uh, even like screen uh, screen uh, um, so that people cannot cannot see too much. I think that's always a great a great uh, um, idea to use. And uh, yeah, other question was about KYC. So do you ever need to verify your wallet or do any kind of KYC? So the answer right is no. Um, and uh, and yeah, next question was about uh, <clears throat> can you have more than one account with MetaMask wallet? And the answer is yes, of course. Like actually, you know, Manbir showed you how you can have the same account and adding new, you know, same same MetaMask extension and adding new new uh, accounts. And that's very important. And if you want to also recover your, let's say, your your account, you just need to import the private key and make sure you also never um, share this. Uh, other question was about, you know, the yeah, MetaMask password, the same as secret recovery phrase. I hope that after this one hour briefing, yeah. everybody got it right. And uh, the answer obviously is no. So that's uh, that's definitely great. And, uh, you know, what's the mascot of MetaMask? Obviously, is a fox. And uh, that's great because the other answer gave us a lot of incentive, maybe to give you know to build some yeah. sub products, but but uh, it's definitely a good idea. Um, I don't know if you want to go through some uh, questions. I think um, I see also like uh, like Christine did amazing job like uh, answering a bunch of questions. Um, do you want to pick up some question, Mambir, or yeah, um, sure. how do you want to do that? Um, so we can do that right now. Sounds good. I see some question. I mean, the one that I pick in my interest are, for example, like I love to know about the UI improvement. You know, this question we ask a yeah. ton souls in different uh, in different events that we are participating. Uh, but uh, I mean, the the right answer yeah, is that I think we are working yeah. on it. Nothing is official. Have you That's collaborated good. with other projects? So uh, yeah, we collaborate with communities. We uh, collaborate in terms of educating people on how to use MetaMask Wallet, like we're doing that right now. So we do sessions like this with uh, a bunch of other projects as well, other communities as well. And is there, uh, okay, uh, when MetaMask released open, no words on that. <laughs> What's your plan for AMA future? We plan to host AMAs in the future, and uh, you might see that happening on uh, our YouTube channel. Can all countries use MetaMask? This is a really interesting question. Yes, so MetaMask is a global uh, wallet. It's, it's a self-custodial wallet, which is used by over 30 million monthly active users globally. And you can use it uh, from anywhere across the world, uh, regardless of your location. Yes, and I also want to add something that uh, a lot of people are asking in in other calls about: Hey, is MetaMask banning uh, users? I think uh, you know there is a mi big mis mis misconception because MetaMask is using uh, is is pointing yeah. to specific endpoints that these RPC uh, endpoints that uh, that Manbir mentioned, and uh, and basically if Infura is uh, is is not providing a service also like indirectly also metamask because it's yeah. pointing to their endpoints so long story short is uh, metamask is not uh, uh, you know banning any users so don't be afraid about that and uh, you can in theory you can also spin your own uh, if you run your own nodes you can spin your own metamask on top of those yeah. uh, private nodes so um, I, I just think there's something that we should definitely be uh, clear, but I think we can also cover this yeah. in, uh, in all we, the questions. We from day one allow you to spin up your own node, so you can do that uh, in case you would like at, at, at any given point of time. 
So do you have any plans yeah, to add other networks? So yeah, as I covered a bit Metamask Snaps, Snaps would allow you to uh, add functionality for other networks as well, non-EVM compatible networks as well, like Solana, Bitcoin, et cetera. But again, that is uh, experimental at this stage, and that is something that only developers should be using. We don't encourage users to be uh, using that because it's it's uh, it, it's experimental and it can take away your funds, right? Uh, and you need to know how to build a snap, how how to use a MetaMask API in order to build a snap, right? Exactly. I see also that there are a couple of questions about you know events, presence, and where we will be. And uh, you know, like we have uh, we have quite let's say straight plans. We we are definitely like. Uh, uh, joining different um, uh, Ethereum global hackathons. We're also offering different bounties. So uh, if any of you guys also are uh, developers that, that are starting also into Web3 space, I think those are amazing, amazing opportunities to start with, right? We will be in specific hackathons where also our team will be. Uh, probably the next ones uh, are like ETH Warsaw, Defcon, obviously yeah. DEFCON afterwards, ETH Berlin, DEFCON. Exactly, and uh, and bunch of those are definitely like uh, great opportunities to learn and uh, and meet good um, uh, Web three uh, uh, future colleagues. Yeah. Cool. Uh, when can we cool. use? Yeah, so I there's another there, right? question. When can we use swap any token? So basically, when can we swap? So as I mentioned, you can swap uh, with any token right from your MetaMask wallet itself using the MetaMask swaps feature. Yes. Cool. That being said, I think we're good. We're good. Yeah. We're three minutes. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining this uh, community call. And excited to have you all here. And uh, just like always, we'll drop the recording uh, in your email uh, so so that you can revisit this later. And yeah, uh, feel free to join our community and introduce yourself over there uh, to keep in touch with our team. And uh, with that being said, thanks for joining.